Great. So welcome everyone uh, to one of the, I think, last product webinar that SOPAC will be bringing today. Um, I'm sure we are all here because we are concerned about how we are facing some of those global challenges related to social inequalities and environmental risk. And we all want to see this transformative change. However, we know that the performance of our activities and how to get a clarity on our intended impact and actual result is actually a difficult task. So today's webinar um, is all the experiences that we had of seven years or six, seven years of being in this field and talking to hundreds of organizations that we experienced that creating the right impact strategy or we call the theory of change and validating and also selecting the metrics or framing the outcome questions and collecting data and managing the data are daunting tasks for many organizations. Sometimes they spend like a months or years, if not, and thousands of dollars to kind of like jumpstart this process or many times kind of struggling to see where to start. So today um, we are actually um, bringing something new and also I think our task to kind of see how this process of starting is not as hard as it seems. And how can we actually become the data on owners more about like increasing the impact data capacity within the organization. And I've invited Madhu, uh, who is going to be a myth buster today. Uh, he's our star product manager, uh, and he will be taking you to the journey of how to, what, what do we consider a data capacity and how to kind of get there and very practical way of kind of uh, building your capacity within the organization so that you become the owners of your data and continuously learn from it to make a decision instead of, I think, somebody else telling you how you're doing. With that, Madhu, would you please uh, say something? Introduce Thank yourself. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Hetal. Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome uh, to our last webinar of this year. Uh, I mean, kind of, you know, we wanted to take this topic because as Hetal like rightly mentioned, like having worked with so many different organizations, uh, one thing is very, very clear, um, not owning your data capacity or not owning the whole process is definitely a hindrance for organization to actually uh, implement something uh, that will help them learn, you know, about how their products and services are impacting their stakeholders. It it has a big impact. So we wanted to take this topic. Uh, one, uh, yeah, it's it's very easy to say, hey, don't outsource and build your own data capacity. But we also wanted to touch upon how how can organizations do this as well? Because we we realize that it's it's not as simple as uh, you know it's it's in in other words, it's easier said than done. So we thought, okay, let's take this topic and break it down um, into series of steps. And um, I have um, I have the entire team here uh, from SOPAC uh, that has helped in you know, putting together this entire uh, sort of webinar. So, um, and please feel free to put all your questions in Q&A. Uh, don't hesitate, there's like literally, the, you know, there, there's no question that can't be answered. So just keep putting in the questions, no matter how simple you think it may be or how complex you think it may be. Uh, we'd love to answer them all. So uh, with that, uh, let's get started. Um, don't outsource, build your own impact data capacity. Now I'm going to, next slide. Uh, we are going to talk through the lens of uh, myths that we've like seen over the years um, in, in, in our industry, in this, in this whole data capacity uh, industry. One is, um, it's just, sort of a nice to have, which is IMM is like impact measurement and management for, for those of you who, um, who don't know what that IMM terminology here means. And we are using IMM as a sort of a synonymous terminology for data capacity, uh, meaning ability to learn, you know, about your stakeholders and ability to learn what impact your projects, programs, initiatives have on them. Three big myths. One is uh, it's a nice to have. Um, myth number one. Uh, second is there are many organizations that say, hey, uh, I will just go pick some standard metrics 
and try to collect data on the metrics. Uh, and uh, that way it will you know, help me inform uh, how my products and services are uh, impacting my stakeholders. Uh, that is the second uh, myth that we've seen you know, in, in specifically our uh, data capacity industry. Uh, the third one is uh, that it has to be done by external organizations or you sort of have to outsource uh, this whole uh, data capacity that you know that your organization needs to have to actually learn about the impact uh, you have uh, through your initiatives on the stakeholders. So uh, it has to be done by external organizations. So we we are talking through uh, the lens of these uh, three myths and why we think they are myths and how can you uh, overcome them. So uh, even before we do that, like what is data capacity? And data capacity, again, IMM and data capacity, we are using it as synonymous terminologies. Uh, we are not looking at it from you know, two different angles. Uh, for us, like data capacity is uh, something, you know, um, a, a process. Um, actually, you know, uh, give me a second, guys. I think there seems to be one problem here. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. For a bit. I'm I'm so sorry. I think I have the wrong uh, version of the presentation. Yeah, I mean, uh, never mind. Let's not lose time. I'm just going to explain this. I, I do think there was there's some mix up in, in the presentation that we have. But uh, in any case, uh, in a sense, the messaging really doesn't change. Uh, for us, uh, having data, like when we say organizations need to have like data capacity, it means uh, to measure, uh, you know, the activities that they have, um, you know, to solve a problem for a stakeholder. Obviously, like through your programs and initiatives, uh, there is a specific problem that you're addressing to solve for your stakeholders, right? So data capacity means uh, having the ability to measure your activities that solve that problem, uh, which may lead to you know certain outcomes that your organization is working towards and having uh, a really uh, uh, intentional and a specific way to measure and monitor those outcome metrics that help you keep track of whether your organization is on the right track with respect to those initiatives and whether it is actually solving uh, the problem of the stakeholders that you're you know that you're uh, that you're talking to and and you are running those initiatives for and we have we have taken a very uh, simple example here uh, of you know girls who code for example the problem that we are taking here is uh, young girls uh, you know ages 15 16 and 17 are at an increased uh, risk of human trafficking as a result of lack of opportunities to good education and thereby jobs. Meaning uh, if they had, we are, what the hypothesis that we are running is if they had good jobs, if they had good education, then the risk of they being a victim of human trafficking is, is low or it, it, it lessens. Uh, if you solve this problem, the outcome that we are going after, if that problem is solved, is improving the quality of life of these young girls, uh, who otherwise would have been a victim of human trafficking. So, uh, and we will, we will, we are going to walk you through the entire process of how to build your data capacity uh, to actually keep track of, let's say, this example metric that we have on the screen, which is percentage of girls who were saved from trafficking and that went on to take a job in the tech industry. Uh, this is sort of a metric that we are going to keep track of to see if those, if our outcome is being achieved. Uh, as a result of solving that problem. So uh, with data capacity definition out of the way, uh, let's look through the, the myths that we have uh, and uh, see what in our perspective are some of the facts like, you know, uh, to those myths. Uh, first point, data capacity is just a nice to have and not really a must have. In our opinion, it's a must have. 
Uh, one is uh, what we've seen um, working with so many different organizations is familiarity with metrics and that to organization wide familiarity with metrics. Uh, it actually ensures that everyone in your organization actually takes uh, or has a higher likelihood of taking the right decisions, no matter what role they may play, right? Like they, there are different teams in an organization. I mean, they, they all have their own role to play, but uh, having this uh, organization-wide familiarity with outcomes and the metrics that are being kept track of ensures that you know there's a higher chance that they would take uh, good decisions to move or keep move to keep moving that forward. Uh, that is uh, number one reason why uh, data capacity is a must-have within your own uh, team because uh, when you sort of you know have someone else uh, do the whole thing. And by the way, by, by saying don't outsource, we don't necessarily mean you wouldn't seek out help. Of course you would. Like uh, even we seek help from external uh, partners whenever you know we need help on certain things, but that doesn't mean like we let them own the process. You still own the process, you still drive the show. And we will get into that uh, myth as, as the third one uh, when we come to that. Second, um, achieving outcomes is directly linked with the questions that you can ask your stakeholders, uh, meaning uh, you need to be asking the right set of questions and collecting right set of data uh, in order for you to achieve your outcomes or to measure your outcomes in a very, very uh, specific and conscious manner uh, to see if you are moving in the right direction. Uh, that is second reason why it is actually a must have um, and not just a nice to have. And then setting verifiable goals and outcomes. Um, this is this is a very, very important one and not like sort of uh, we are calling out on vague aspirations. like there are there are organizations that we've seen like have like big, bold uh, uh, outcome statements, and they are not measurable, honestly. Uh, and if they are not measurable, there is no there's no specific way that you can actually keep track of whether your organization is going in the right direction with respect to those initiatives at all we uh highly recommend breaking that big aspiration down into verifiable goals and outcomes and verifiable in terms of having quantitative metrics now this is not to say that data is going to give you everything that you need uh, right on day one for you to sort of measure and you will exactly know uh, where you're going wrong. No, uh, it doesn't really mean that. It only means uh, you're working in terms of probabilities. The probability that your initiatives are doing well. Uh, higher the probability, you're doing a good job of the measurement. It doesn't, we, we are not talking in terms of absolutes here at all. Uh, so, but it you still cannot avoid having quantifiable metrics that actually gives you a clear picture or, or a direction uh, of your initiatives. Uh, that is myth number one. Second, um, data capacity means uh, you know using standard metrics. This is not to say that, hey, uh, don't use standard metrics at all. Like you know there are frameworks, there are standards, uh, there are compliance reasons why organizations uh, use some of the standard metrics, and we absolutely get that. But that shouldn't be your step one. We've seen organizations use that as a step one. Like you know they would think of their initiatives and they will you know quickly jump on some standard metrics and see, hey, what can I use to measure uh, the effectiveness of this program? Um, we 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 feel it's sort of a a uh, reverse way of doing things, which doesn't help organizations in moving forward. It can be your step two, but uh, you first need to still think before you go to standards about what problem you're solving for your stakeholder, what outcomes are you going after, and how do you, in a quantifiable manner, measure those? And we will we will get to the practicality of of uh, of that in a bit. This is our last myth that it has to be done by external organizations or uh, you cannot do that in-house. Uh, we feel it's not just you cannot do it in-house, you must do it in-house and you have to own the process. Why? One, 
your organization and the people that work within your organization have the biggest context. Uh, they know the problem they are going after. They all know what stakeholders you are uh, talking to. They all know more about initiatives than any other external partner can, you know, uh, can replace uh, with that thought process. They can help you, but they can't replace uh, exactly what you do. Um, second, cost. In terms of time, money, and quality, uh, it takes a lot more time. It it costs you a lot more money, and uh, it doesn't help with quality of uh, of the whole data capacity that you want to have, like within your team. Like you want to have something quantifiable, something that tells you uh, you're sort of going in the right direction. Uh, by literally outsourcing this to um, a third party organization or anyone, uh, it costs you in terms of these three things, time, money, and quality. Uh, now, the, the next question is, hey, like we don't have a lot of people, like who, who can really do that within our, our organization? Because that's, that's, a, that's a valid reason why someone would actually go to an external uh, organization in order to run this whole data capacity. We feel it could be anyone with interest in data and has some time on hand. Uh, you don't have to be like a data whiz or, uh, you know, you don't, you don't really have to, there, there's, there's, there's another myth that, okay, uh, uh, capacity means we need, uh, we need experts. Of course you need expertise, but with a little bit of time on hand, you can actually build that expertise within your uh, team. And we'll see that it could also be like, if, if it's like two or three person organization, it could also be the founder, uh, herself or himself, uh, who, who owns this process. Um, and third point is, again, uh, this is to say, don't outsource does not mean don't get assistance. Of course, get assistance, but you can't, you can't have uh, the whole process being outsourced, meaning uh, the external party cannot come up with questions. They can't come up with uh, the whole strategy on their own. It's, it's just not possible. And even if, if that happens, it costs you in terms of time, money, and quality. Now let's let's look at like how do we like really do this like firsthand uh, with the demo. So I'm I'm going to switch over uh, to sort of demo mode where we will walk you through uh, that example that we were looking at, which is girls code, and uh, this is going to be like hands down like a practical uh, session through and through. So uh, we will walk you through right from strategy all the way to landing on the dashboards where you're learning, where you're able to learn from uh, your stakeholders uh, what the initiative is doing. And in this case, we have taken a fictitious um, scenario. Oh, pause my share and I'm going to switch over to strategy. Um, so uh, there are three things we are going to look at. One is the strategy. This is uh, this is more of a brainstorming or or a thought process session. Uh, just to confirm, is everyone able to see uh, this diagram or or the screen clearly? Um, because if not, I'm I'm going to increase the size of. Yeah, my dear, we can see it well. Thanks, Lori. So uh, first is the strategy part, where uh, it's more of a thought process, meaning what problem are you solving for? for which of your stakeholders and being very conscious about who is the stakeholder, what problem you're solving and thinking through some of the outcomes that you're going after, that you want your stakeholders to actually experience. And then uh, the next step of the strategy is to actually map out metrics and data points. Now, let's say you have your outcomes and I'm going to walk you through the entire process that we follow uh, within SOPACT. Uh, map out the Do just map. one thing. Can you make it slightly larger? Yes. Thanks. Is uh, is this clear? Yes. Uh, so map out your metrics and data points uh, that are aligned with the outcomes that will help you in keeping track of whether you are in the right direction or not. Uh, now. Since you have metrics, you have data points, obviously uh, you, you know, the, the natural uh, thought process is that I need to be collecting data. 
um, I need to be collecting data on a certain data points in order for me to do the metrics. Uh, that's where we come into step two, which is data management. And data management, by data management, we mean it's it's data collection and processing that data in a way uh, that helps you learn from that data. And we are going to look at the practical example uh, in just a moment. So data, data collection uh, can be surveys, interviews. It could be connecting different operational systems. It could also be like connecting to external data sources. And I will talk about that in just a minute. And being able to process all of this different sources of data in a way that supports your ability or your organization's ability to learn from that data. So I want to emphasize this part. This part is not about just building some dashboards and putting visualizations and I don't know, sharing with, with the funders. I'm talking uh, from the perspective of learning from the data and uh, as a you know as as a, you know as a natural process you can also have like reports and dashboards created to share it with people but the focus here is on building capacity to actually learn from data um once you are able to process this data in a way that lends itself to learning the final thing is actually dashboarding it could be that your purpose is presentation it could be your that your pur purpose is learning uh, we are taking the perspective of learning, but nothing stops you from doing the presentation bit. So this is like the high level that we are going to walk you through uh, through that example. Uh, please feel free to put questions in in the Q and A. Uh, I I keep repeating that because uh, you know like in webinar like it's it's just one person talking and I don't get to know like how the audience is actually perceiving it. If at any point there's any confusion, please uh, please feel free to put. Uh, questions in Q&A. So I'm going to switch over to an example uh, called Girls Code. Now, um, and let me share. Um, I hope everyone is able to see my screen where uh, I have the Girls Code project here. And uh, Girls Code project is about you know improving the quality of life of young underprivileged underprivileged girls uh, by systematically training them in coding and placing them in the tech industry. So the whole point here is to improve the quality of of life. So we are we are now going to see uh, what does a typical strategy process, which we were talking about uh, this one, looks like when you are actually trying to brainstorm. Uh, what metrics to keep track of and what data points to collect uh, data on. So I'm going to click on a girl's code and I'm going to go to full view. Now, this is the whole thing. Uh, the problem statement. Now, the problem statement that we are going after in this project is young girls aged 15, 16, and 17 are at an increased risk of human trafficking as, as a result of lack of opportunities uh, to education and uh, obviously thereby jobs. And from this problem follows the activities. Um, and this is what we do when we are you know, working with organizations, when we want to help them think through some of these things that they are doing. Think through their problem statement and then come up with activities that they do. And these are activities that your organizations might be doing to actually solve this problem. So in this case, uh, we, are, we have taken a hypothetical activity saying we are, we are running an online educational platform where girls uh, not only learn to code, uh, by following the lessons, but they also get to take tests on technical concept that actually test them on some of these technical concepts. We are taking that as an activity. And um, I'll talk about activity metric, but that's not really the focus. After activity, obviously, uh, there are some immediate outputs that you can that you can see based on whatever activities you're doing. Uh, in this case, one of you know one of the outputs or a couple of outputs that we've taken, is since they learn coding on the LMS system or the learning management system, uh, they start building applications. That is one of the output that can happen. And we still say it's an output, it's not really an outcome because building an application doesn't really help them in improving their quality of life. And that's why it's an output. It's like an immediate result. Uh, the other output is girls get job in tech industry after finishing the course. 
Uh, this is also an output because it doesn't necessarily mean that it has improved their quality of life. And I'll, I'll touch upon that topic in just a moment. So uh, let's take this output as an example. Like girls get jobs in the tech industry after finishing the course. The outcome as a result that we are going after is improving the quality of life by getting them the jobs in the tech industry. Uh, and how we do that is by, uh, you know, making them go through the course. Um, so if I'm looking at this one, then I, you know, the, the way to start thinking about metrics is one, obviously this needs to be quantifiable, like improving quality of life of these young girls who otherwise would have been a victim of human trafficking. Uh, one way that we do that is percentage of girls who were saved from trafficking and that went on to take a job in the tech industry. Uh, this is one of the ways of measuring this, but this alone doesn't give you quality of life, inf information on quality of life. For that, we would then come up with another metric that specifically focuses on quality of life. Now, there's an argument to be made that, hey, just the fact that they avoided being traffic means um, you, know, you actually improved their quality of life. Uh, yes, but there's also a no because there's an increased risk of they you know being at a risk of uh, going into that life if something sustaining doesn't happen so in that case uh, the metric that we are going to keep track of uh, which we felt was practical in this example was percentage of girls that earn more than the median salary for that position you know based on let's say a specific location we have just taken that as an example um these two things in combination, uh, we hypothesize that it is going to systematically improve their quality of life because this change is sustaining. So um, for those of you who are familiar with five dimensions of impact, um, there you know you uh, you have like outcome across scale depth and duration. And this is about you know duration, experiencing outcomes over longer periods of time. Now, once you come up with these metrics, uh, the next important point is data points. Like something should tell you, like, how do I compute this metric? In this case, there are two data points uh, because it's a percentage. We need something that gives me the total number of girls that were rescued, let's say from border areas, ready to be trafficked. And we have taken a hypothetical situation of, you know, uh, that data coming from an Excel sheet. And the second data point that we need to compute this metric is uh, like a survey. Um, not all data points come from a survey. In this case, this data point actually comes from a survey. So did you get a job after completing the course? Because that's what we need. And that's, that's what the metric is. So once you have the metric, once you have the data point, you've kind of also arrived at a possibility of how do you calculate, you know, sort of this metric using these two data points. And you know, from where, uh, you know, the data points actually come from, the data for the data points actually come from, the next step obviously becomes implementation. And this is literally the same process that you would repeat for outputs, for activities, for anything that you want to measure. Literally, you would come up with like whatever you want to measure, you will come up with a quantifiable metric. And this needs to be something practical, something that you can actually um, execute. Um, no matter what tools you're using, by the way. And once all of this is laid out, uh, if you noticed, this actually is your dashboard uh, in the sense that there's no data here, but this is your dashboard. Like the fact that you will be able to calculate this metric put on the dashboard means uh, your ability to learn uh, from data also um, has improved. Obviously, uh, the capacity that you need to have is to combine uh, these data points, to collect data, and to actually compute uh, this metric. So with, with all of this out of the way, let's get into the practicalities of how can you do this. In our case, what we do is like, after we come up with all of these survey questions, our next really step is to one, collect the data, right? Like this comes from a survey, but this is coming from an Excel sheet. It's a registration system. Uh, and the external data that I was talking about earlier, uh, the median salary for that location and for that position, it comes from job market. Like we are looking at external sources of data. 
So we are going to bring in data from that external source to compute this uh, metric. But uh, really the next part in our process when we help organizations is to actually you know, run the survey. Whatever surveys you create, uh, we have like a tight integration between uh, this app and our survey tool. So we they, all of these questions actually get deployed on the survey and we start collecting data on the survey. Uh, once you know that, okay, uh, I have these sources, I can collect data, I conducted my survey and not all data points uh, come from a survey. It can also come like, for example, let's take this as an example, number of girls that finished the course successfully with a passing score on the completion test. This literally depends on our LMS system. And that's why the source is LMS system here, if you notice. Um, and we are, we are going to bring in data points from the LMS system rather than a survey. Um, now that we, we have this out of the way, let's look at practicalities of things. You have your data collected, you have your metric. How do you actually go ahead and execute that on the dashboard? And I'm going to switch over to the dashboard to show that. Now, two, two parts here to the dashboard. One is your data strategy. And I'm going to click on this. Uh, what we do when we execute all of these things is right there on the dashboard, we have our entire data strategy laid out, meaning what are the data points and where does it come from? Like now, for example, the median salary for the location and for that position, this is actually a data point and it comes from the job market. Uh, similarly, like total girls that pass the coding test on LMS comes from the LMS system. So we map out literally every data point that we need to compute all of those metrics with the sources so that there's like literally no confusion in, um, you know, while we are actually computing all of the metrics. Once this is laid out, uh, you will always be able to refer back, uh, you know, back and forth with, with all of these data points and how you're going to collect them. Then we have a clearly laid out process to actually say, metric, what are the data points I need and what are the sources so that uh, you have a very, very clear roadmap to calculating some of, uh, some of these metrics. Now, for those of you who might be using Excel, if uh, let's say the data that you collect is, I don't know, like a very few records, um, you're running like a cohort, uh, 10, 15 people, uh, you can run this entire process on an Excel, you don't need any sort of sophisticated system. But when the amount of data obviously increases, uh, you will have to look at some more sophisticated system because uh, we've seen that you know Excels have um, have you know the the downside of as the data scales, it it slows down, it crashes. There are many many uh, other limitations to Excel. But if you're running something very small, a uh, few records uh, that you want to analyze by all means, you can actually do uh, Excels, but you will obviously still need to have the capability to do a lot of VLOOKUPs on it so that you are able to combine the different data sources. Um, in our case, like once we add that in place, and I will show you that in a minute, uh, it sort of kicks in continuously, meaning the ability for us to replicate a process that we establish to compute any of these metrics uh, uh, the ability to replicate is is way faster and way easier because we just take that system, put it in, let's say, another program, uh, and implement the entire process. And it, it's it's a matter of few hours for us to just replicate that. Uh, that might get tricky if you have large amounts of data on an Excel. Um, so, just saying that. But for a few records, you can always do that. Now, um, let's. Uh, Let's break it down a little. What do we really mean by outcome learnings? And uh, what do we really mean when we say, hey, you need to have this data capacity in-house in order to learn? Let's let's take that. Let's take that practical example now that we've got all of these metrics uh, out of the way. So uh, this is your dashboard. And from our perspective, sort of a learning dashboard. Now, starts with the problem again, like who, what, what's the problem you're trying to solve? We always try to bring that up uh, in our dashboards and we also have outcomes that you're going after. 
Um, second, this this section is about you know who are you reaching? Like who are your stakeholders? Uh, what's their age distribution? Uh, country of origin. Uh, uh, it could also have things like you know their their situation. Like and this is where you would present a lot of uh, data on how underserved your stakeholders are in order to justify that this whole process that you're doing, uh, which is learning from data is actually justified, right? Like uh, you also need to be uh, addressing uh, like a real, real pain point. And uh, that's what this whole thing about, you know, uh, um, uh, uh, about knowing about your stakeholders makes a difference. So in this case, uh, we are saying, hey, uh, these are our stakeholders. And out of those stakeholders, uh, there were some that were saved from trafficking and some that were not. So in that case, like 51%. And the total uh, number of girls that were saved uh, like is 35. And not all from trafficking. In this fictitious scenario, we have 51% uh, saved from trafficking. Now, uh, since our problem is actually improving, uh, obviously, or or uh, helping the girls that are at a risk of uh, human trafficking, we are going to take this 51% as our total in all our analysis. We, we are not going to touch upon this part, although it may also be as important uh, you know, as this one. But we are, going to, we are going to address this core problem of girls that are at a risk of human trafficking. How is our initiative helping them? Because that's the problem we took. To, act, to, to, to to solve. So from that point of view, all the other visualizations that you see is actually a breakdown of the girls that were saved from trafficking. Uh, so this comes from the Excel registration system where the girls are being registered. Uh, again, uh, requires you to have the ability to sort of filter uh, the data and then coming up with these uh, percentage points. That is that is a capacity that you basically need to have if you want to do this sort of an analysis at a very, very practical uh, standpoint. Now, one thing that we want to understand since we are going to put them through the LMS course is how familiar are they with technology? Now, uh, not everyone can easily pick up technology. We all know that. Um, it depends on how, you know, it depends on their background, how exposed they are to that. Uh, so in that case, like out of the people that were saved uh, from trafficking, uh, we, are, we are taking a scenario of 38% uh, being, you know, familiar with technology. And this is, uh, we are going to see if this had has had any bearing on their ultimate outcome of getting jobs in the tech industry. Um, and actually, let's say, earning higher than the median salary. And that comes in our outcome outcome part. We are still looking at like who our stakeholder is, what is their background, uh, what can we learn more about the stakeholder in order for you to analyze the data in a way that helps you learn whether those outcomes are being achieved. Let's, uh, let's move on to some of uh, the activities. Now, the dashboard can also have activity metrics. If you have an LMS system, in this case, we are taking a fictitious scenario of having a digital platform that helps uh, these girls sort of learn uh, coding and, and you know, possibly get jobs. Uh, so we are keeping track of, hey, number of technical lessons that are on the LMS system, number of courses that we have, uh, number of girls that were registered online on the platform as part of this cohort, which is 18. And by the way, this uh, number is only uh, the one that was saved from trafficking. We The total number is actually 35. Uh, then this is where it gets uh, interesting. Now, if, if you look at output, um, and I'm going to go to this again. And this is precisely the metric that is being kept track over there, which is number of girls that built uh, an app post the course. So how many, how many girls were able to build the app? Uh, and this is considering that 18 number, which is, you know, you know, people or girls who were saved from human trafficking. Uh, only 12.5% actually built an app post that course. So this output metric itself should 
give you know this organization that is running this program a pause saying here is the course that helps people code in the jobs they probably need to build applications but post course just 12.5% is able to, able to build the app uh this should actually give a pause to the organization and make them think what can we do to improve this percentage otherwise like you know it's it's possible that it actually has a bearing on whether they can get jobs or not which is uh depicted here in in the second visualization which is out of these people who say uh no like you know i we you know they didn't build an app or they were not able to build an app post the course out of these people how many are actually able to get jobs if you see here only 10% are able to get jobs out of this uh and by the way these two visualization they heavily rely on two sources of data one is survey data whether girls got jobs or not and then you have the courses data where uh whether they build an app is being kept track of and then obviously the third data source is your registration system from where you get the total number of girls so you will you will need to combine all of these three different sources in order to come up with these two visualizations that actually help you in learning meaning um 87% did not build the app and this 87% is something that is depicted here in this visualization and 90% didn't get a job which means there's a strong correlation that okay it's possible that people who are not able to build apps uh, might not be getting jobs so by the way it doesn't mean it is it is uh, it is causing it now this should make the organization ask certain follow up questions like what uh, what other data can help me in understanding a bit more about what's happening here why why are 90% of the people who are not able to build apps not getting jobs does it have any is is there any direct uh, causation between uh, these two factors so this is this is the learning part that we that we are talking about without this core ability um, it's very very difficult for organizations to keep track of outcomes and it holds true even for us like as as so pack uh, even we have so many initiatives and today we are actually launching one one initiative if if we are to measure that initiative how successful how uh, how poorly that is doing without having this ability in house and you can imagine why uh, our strong position of you can't literally outsource this to someone i i can't be outsourcing our entire data learning to some other organization and ask them hey can you tell me how my initiative is doing this it's just not possible because we are the ones that will have the best contextual information on the audience that we are reaching at we have the best uh, information on what problem we are trying to solve and we are also in the best position to ask ourselves like what other question can i understand from my stakeholder in order to help them make progress while it helps you know you as an organization to make progress uh and that is why like you can't outsource you can you can you can uh, take assistance but not really outsource finally the outcome improving the quality of life of these young girls who otherwise would have been a victim of human trafficking that's the outcome that you know we are trying to measure and in our hypothetical scenario we are taking one two and three three different metric uh to understand this metric number 1 a uh, percentage of girls who were saved from trafficking and that went on to take a job in the tech industry and that percentage in this scenario is just 16.7% uh again this should actually give a pause uh to the organization to understand hey like why is this percentage obviously so low uh and this is more of art than you know than science i mean the ability to ask better questions and by the way like you also get better at asking questions if you keep asking questions so uh but you have to start somewhere and again if this part is outsourced then you don't really develop the ability to ask better questions which means you will probably um, will always fly blind like that will always be your blind spot so 
Um, and this is just about asking questions. So 16.7%, um, you know, that were safe from trafficking um, and went on to take a job in the industry. And out of the 16.7%, we just have 33% that actually express satisfaction or quality of their job in their work environment. Now, we, we went with an outcome of improving their quality of life. There are, there are two different metrics here that signify uh, or you know, are a factor to that. Now is, is the time for the organization, at least in this fictitious scenario, to ask themselves, like, where do I focus my energy on? Should I focus my energy on this or should I focus my energy on this? Meaning we can put our resources, our money behind improving, let's say, our LMS system. Uh, and let's say we understand from subsequent data collection that, yes, our LMS system has some holes that needs to be plugged in order for us to improve the capability of our girls to actually take jobs in the industry. Uh, we could do that. We could put resources behind that. And everyone has limited resources, every organization in the world, no matter what organization it is. Um, or we can, we can do this, like, you know, try to learn more about why, you know, you know they are not satisfied, why only 33.3% are satisfied. We can put some resources to learn more about that. Uh, it depends on what your core uh, area of focus is. Uh, if, if we were an organization, we probably would be focusing on this. Um, and then final thing, which is again, like a very quantifiable metric that we keep track of is uh, earn more than a median salary. Um, so this is getting data from external uh you know um, um external entity which is the job market like you know what is the median salary for this position um and if you look at this data it says 90 percent don't earn more than median salary which means it probably is affecting their satisfaction at work as well like there there's a correlation we still can't establish whether this is the cause because there are many other factors uh that you know uh, that make a person unhappy at their work, but definitely this is one of one of the factors. And since ninety percent don't earn, you know, sort of um, uh, more than a median salary, it might be correlated to the thirty three point three percent. Now, all of these three metrics, uh, you know, the data that it is using is from the registration system, the survey data, and the job market. Um, so. Combining all of those data sets uh, together is when you can actually compute uh, all of these things. Now, imagine the scenario where you actually have uh, all of this capacity in-house. Your ability to do all of this analytics at fraction of the time and at fraction of the cost quadruples, no joke. Uh, like if you were to depend on an external organization just to just to do all of these things for you, it just doesn't cost you in terms of time. It also costs you in terms of money and quality uh, because there's, there's only so much uh, you can do. And that is why we say it is so, so important to develop these capabilities in-house and to execute all of these things in-house. Uh, you can all, that doesn't mean you can't seek help. Please go and seek help. You know, talk to your favorite consultant, talk to your favorite organization, doesn't matter. You can definitely seek help, but you cannot out outsource. Um, like after this webinar, uh, I think we, we will share with you uh, this entire uh, workbook of this entire process and also the techniques that we've used to compute these metrics. Obviously, uh, in the webinar, I couldn't have like showed you the entire process, but in that write up, you will you will get that. So. If you have access to some of uh, these tools, you will be able to execute this entire thing end to end on your side. And honestly, that's uh, that was the aim of this webinar to, in our little way, uh, improve uh, data capacity for for you and your organization. If you if you need that, obviously, if you already have all of these capabilities, that's really great. Uh, that means you you know you at least have a head start when compared to the organizations that don't. Um, I do think um, 
Oh, I think that is a sorry. Um, there are actually quite a few questions. Okay. Uh, yeah. If you uh, wanted to kind of refer to that, I know you probably wouldn't have a chance to look at them. Um, I do see that there's a quite a few questions about this strategy app. Like, is that uh, downloadable? Um, how you know this automatically uh, many some of this component that you showed about this data mapping would come to the dashboard or not? I think um, I saw a flare of excitement uh, when you showed that. Um, so maybe you can touch upon a little bit of that. And also one question that I see uh, coming up a little bit more often is what kind of data sources that we can um, connect uh, to the dashboard? Um, I think because people do kind of identify that there is a uh, multiple sources of data that's, you know, most of the organizations do. And I think some of this causality that you identified uh, definitely kind of speaks to that because uh, there are multiple data points. So if yes. you can kind of touch upon some of that, that would be great. Yeah. Uh, so um, on on that, um, on the second point, which is, um, I think uh, the data points and our ability to sort of, uh, uh, you know, connect. So data points are basically data sources. And let me, let me actually go back to that. The data points that you see, uh, in fact, I think I can, I can show you a better view uh, of that here. So data points are basically data sources, meaning uh, they help you in computing the metric that you've come up with uh, to keep track of whether it is activity, output, or outcome. Um, and once you have data on these data points, obviously uh, getting data on these data points rely on your ability to connect to the sources. In our case, there are multiple sources that you can connect to. Like in some organizations, we've connected Salesforce. In some organizations, it is a simple Excel sheet that they're uploading. In some other organizations, uh, things are coming from uh, their uh, other CRM uh, systems. So there are, there are various different systems. And in our case, like to actually measure the initiatives, uh, you know, that we run, in, we, we, we also have products that help you in doing all of these things. To measure those in initiatives, we also have the database, like where the information gets stored. So we do have the ability because we also eat our own cookie, which is we we do all of these analytics for SOPAC within our company uh, to, to measure our initiatives. So we we do have capability to connect to many, many different uh, different sources. Um, and yeah, you may you may want to talk to us uh, to like understand better uh, on, on that one. Um, also, I think if you want to kind of uh, share your thoughts about inviting people for the strategy app, uh, I don't know if you have that. Yes, I, I think I, I saw one of the questions there. Hey, can we download uh, the strategy exactly. app? This is, yeah, this is, I think, like a completely uh, web-based application. So you can, you can actually uh, use this uh, application on your own, like strategy.sopac.com. That's the, that's the link. And uh, like we we wanted to uh, sort of uh, introduce this initiative that we have uh, to help organization you know go all the way uh, from problem to metric data point and optionally survey questions. Our aim with this application is to help you get to this point of identifying quantifiable metrics, coming up with data points, thinking through what data sources uh, you know, uh, need to be connected in order to get to these data points. And in your case, it could be as simple as an Excel sheet also. When I say data sources, I don't want anyone uh, to be confused with, hey, like, oh, should I connect external systems? No, it, also, it can also mean a simple Google sheet in Excel uh, that where you might be collecting data. So don't have to think anything complicated there. Um, so uh, yeah, like our, our aim is to give you a metric, data point and optionally survey question. And uh, I think the initiative that we were thinking of is, um, it, it, we have a free trial uh, on this on this product. Um, in fact, if you sign up today, uh, we will extend that trial by a month. We have a one month free trial anyway, uh, but we will we will extend by, uh, by another month, two months. And also uh, for those of you uh, who would sign up today, uh, we can also help you in, in certifying your data strategy uh, which means that in some ways uh, you will have a higher understanding of how can you bring in data from these different sources and actually start learning uh, once you collect data. So 
the output of this process would be to get you to metric data point and survey question and to actually help you uh, certify that, okay, these are quantifiable uh, metrics. Uh, these data points do make sense. These survey questions do make sense because we want to help you do uh, exactly what we did with this fictitious program of understanding some of these uh, data points for your initiatives, of course. Um, so, so yeah, uh, feel free to uh, sign up, and um, we will we will see you, I guess, on the other side. I, I think know. also uh, one more uh, small announcement um, that we do have our next webinar. I just shared a link. Um, this is actually with Spencer McCall uh, from Kiva. And it's a very interesting and I think very aligned topic that what we are talking about today. Um, it's um, he has written an article about this evidence gap in impact investing, uh, why social enterprise struggle to measure social impact and what impact investors can do about it. Uh, so I hope that many of you do kind of join us there as well. Thank you so much, Hetal. Um... So yeah, with that, I think I see that um, we are kind of coming to end of our time. Thank you so much, Madhu. I know this was actually uh, quite an information to digest. And I think many of you have asked um, a recording, which we will be sharing in a couple of days. Um, I think our team has tried to answer many of the questions live. And uh, if you think that some of them has not been answered, um, be happy to kind of reach out to us and we will answer them. Um, so yeah, have a wonderful day, um, all of you, and I can't believe it's almost Thanksgiving. So we are very thankful to have uh, an audience like you who join our webinars uh, time and again, and are grateful to kind of be in this space together. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone.